According to the internets, the ATF has yet again raided a law-abiding company, this time for a simple drawing. Is it true, and what the heck actually happened? Did it happen because of a YouTube video? We'll break it down after this. TA Targets offers some of the most innovative and robust target systems money can buy. Featuring AR550 steel and forward-thinking build quality, these targets are built to last. Whether you're blasting every day or plinking on the weekends, TA Targets has something for everyone. To get 10% off your entire order, head over to tatargets.com and use our code TGC10. Welcome back to The Gun Collective. My name is John Patton and you are watching The Fight for Gun Rights. If you've made it this far, get subscribed for more thrilling intro and hype statements. I don't know. Anyway, the real reason you're here, the ATF raid. Let's start with the issue at the core of this. On March 2nd, 2021, the Jacksonville, Florida branch of the ATF raided a company called Auto Key Card based on the claim that they were illegally selling machine gun parts. The company bears the same name as the product. So what is an auto key card? Well, it came in several forms and they all have the same commonality. Whether it was a business card or a bottle opener or some other form factor, it was a flat piece of stainless steel with the outline of what looked like a lightning link. For those out of the loop, a lightning link is a part that was intended to convert a standard AR-15 into a machine gun. For fear that this video gets deleted entirely, I'll let you do your own research on how that actually works. That being said, on ATF's website, describing the seizure of the websites that lead to auto key card, they cited 26 USC subsection 5845B, which is where we find the definition of a machine gun. The key portion of that is the part that says, any part designed and intended solely and exclusively or combination of parts designed and intended for use in converting a weapon into a machine gun. They are claiming that these auto key cards fall under that law and therefore are illegal to possess, let alone sell. It also says the possession of any machine gun conversion device sold on these web domains is a felony violation of federal law, which carries a penalty of up to 10 years in prison and a fine of up to $250,000 per count. So basically, if you own one of these, you could be in possession of something the ATF has deemed a no-no part. The next line also says, <laughs> this is great, call them if you are in possession of one of these things, which I absolutely do not recommend for anyone as that would potentially incriminate yourself and cause you a world of problems. Sorry, ATF, I'm not doing the work for you. Now, back to the raid. According to local news outlets in Florida and some other YouTube videos, Christopher Irvin, the guy behind this, was in possession of over 1,500 of these things, and his entire family, as well as all of his assets, were seized in the process. If we extrapolate that out, if he were to get the maximum sentence per item, it would come out to over 15,000 years in prison, or and or $388 million in fines. That is substantial. <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. The real question that comes to mind is whether or not the part is actually something that falls under that machine gun law. It's essentially an etching, like a laser etching on a stainless steel card, and by that line of thinking, it absolutely should not be considered a part to convert something into a machine gun. It's just an etching on a flat piece of metal. However, the ATF is not gonna stop there and give up. They don't do that. They look at this and see that these parts are etched at the near exact dimensions. I don't know the exact dimensions. And being that it's already made of metal, it could reasonably withstand the use inside of a firearm. Combine that with how the ATF treated Poly 80 last year and called them actual firearms when they're not, and how they've had a fixation on going after solvent trap retailers claiming illegal silencer sales, it's no surprise to me that this came onto their radar. There's a claim being made by some folks that this is a mere drawing or simply a novelty piece of art. To me, that is an argument made by someone that doesn't understand how the ATF, the US court system, or our laws work. The prosecution will look at this and say, if this is intended to be a piece of art, 
Why is it etched to the correct dimensions to be cut out and then installed into a gun? If it were perhaps put on a t-shirt or a framed print and not made of stainless steel, but instead made of pasta noodles at the dimensions of a lightning link, sure, maybe those would be art. But that is going to be really difficult to argue in front of a judge. To me, the novelty or artwork arguments are weak at best. Not only that, but if you do a quick Google search for auto keycard, you'll come across a video by a YouTuber called Rugaroo, I believe that's how it's pronounced, called Move Over Solvent Trap, the Auto Keycard. With a title like that, the ATF is bound to perk up their ears. And along with that title, the tags of the video, like screw the ATF, repeal the NFA, and the ATF hates this, I, fe I feel like the magnifying glass got moved a little bit closer there. Why would the ATF hate it if it was supposed to be a novelty? Sometimes I wonder if people think about the actual implications of stuff like that. An article released by firstcoastnews.com points out that the court filing, which I was unable to track down, I guess it's still sealed up and maybe they have access, pointed to a YouTube video that said, the parts ATF wishes never existed. And an online message that agents attributed to the owner of Auto Keycard encouraging people to buy AR-related devices now in case they went off the market. It really is as if people don't think that this cheeky, playful banter doesn't have real-world consequences. I managed to find the video called The Parts That ATF Wish Never Existed, made by some halfwit, as if they wouldn't watch that video. Like, duh, they're absolutely gonna watch that. And then, while doing a paid promotion for the auto keycard, consistently referred to it as a lightning link, even encouraging people to not have their name associated with it. So, jump on autokeycard.com, they even have discrete ordering, you just go to your local library, print off the order form, shove a money order in there, and have it shipped to your anti-gun relative and pick it up there so your name is not associated with the lightning link at all. Then, while holding up the auto keycard in his hand, says, these are designed for the Colt SP-1 bolt carriers, and to drop it in to scratch your full auto itch, and then throw it away when you're done. That same YouTuber, then released a video being surprised that this company got raided. You basically just called it a machine gun part, dude. If this did have a chance to fly under the radar, stuff like that just ruins it. Just like social media giants are able to figure out code words for selling guns through their platforms, so too can the ATF figure things out. It would be flat out stupid to think that they wouldn't also monitor videos made about subjects like I don't know, solvent traps for potential criminal activity. It is, however, reasonable to say that the owner of the company is not responsible for the actions of the customers. I fully believe that. I, I mean, they can't be held responsible for that. However, I'm not sure the court will apply that line of thinking in this case because illegal machine guns are being claimed. And even if the guy didn't sell them, the possession is an issue in and of itself if they are proven to be illegal machine gun parts. I haven't seen the website in question, but supposedly there were no instructions on how to use a lightning link or something similar, so in theory, that could be used as a defense. With all that being said, should stuff like this be legal without question? Absolutely. We should be able to own, like, Hellfire missiles, if you ask me, but as the law exists currently, that's not the case. The ATF doesn't operate based on what should be true, unfortunately. I'm really curious to get your read on this situation, guys. I I'm really curious to know what you guys think. How do you think it's gonna end? And do you think the owner of auto key cards should be absolved of any wrongdoing? Is it a drawing on the card? Am I totally wrong about this? Sound off in the comments and let me know. If you guys enjoyed this video, do me a favor and hit the like button and let the algorithm know. And if you haven't already, get subscribed as well. That would be rad. I'd love to have you back. We make gun news videos all the time. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.